All right, so let's continue working through here. Question number two, uh, looks like a nightmare, right? Oh my gosh, there's all this stuff here. Um, but if you, if you look at it quickly, um, we can see that everything here has the same chemical formula. Uh, we can see that everything's connected the same way. And here's what I mean when I look at that, right? Obviously in the middle there is our chiral carbon. And so what we need to do is just look at the four things that are attached to it. If we break it apart, we've got an ethyl group, we've got a chlorine, we've got a hydrogen, right? And then we've got uh, uh, green, seems good. Okay, and we've got this uh, methylene brom bromide kind of chain there, the CH2Br. And if you look through every single uh, every single uh, structure that we have drawn here, it all has those same groups that are that are attached to it. So then it's asked for the relationship between these molecules. And remember, if you have one chiral center, right? If you have one chiral center, your options are pretty limited in terms of what the relationship is, right? We can have an enantiomer, or it can be the same molecule, right? If they all have the same formula, and you only have one chiral center, right, and they're all connected in the same way, really all you can have is an enantiomer or the same molecule. You can't have a diastereomer, right? You can't have a diastereomer for a single car, uh, single chiral center. So uh, this question is deceptively trickier than it really is. You really got a 50-50 shot in each case, right? So let's go through and narrow down that 50-50 shot to 100%. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this stuff here. What we need to do then, right, is determine whether something's in an enantiomer or the same molecule. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna assign priority, just like we always do, at least for this chapter, right? Okay, so uh, directly bound to that carbon there, we've got a chlorine, okay? We've got a carbon, we've got a hydrogen. Hydrogen pretty much always gonna be four. Uh, we got this CH2Br, the CH2, CH3 groups. So we'll do this, whoops. We'll do this as two, and we'll do this as three. Real quickly, I'm just gonna um, go through, right? Simplify, right? Rotate in whatever way you want. I'm gonna go crazy and I'm gonna rotate in a completely different way, right? So I'm going to uh, rotate the four back to the one, the one to the three, the three to the four there. It doesn't really matter. I'm basically saying my two is my axis. Rotations, remember, don't change anything with respect to R versus S. They just change the, uh, you know, the relative uh, positioning of the, uh, of the different groups. So four got rotated back here, one got rotated here, and three got rotated there. Okie dokie, so we did that. We can look at it, one, two, three, so this is S. So we got S. And we go through and we do the same thing for every molecule, right? Once you've assigned priority once, the priorities aren't gonna change for anything here either, right? And so once you've assigned priority, what you can do is go through and look at the exam and identify where the hydrogen or the number four is facing away from you, right? Or facing towards you. And remember, those are kind of the simplest positions that we can have the four. When the four uh, is in the plane of the paper, then we might have to do a little bit more work. So I had four that are in the plane of the paper here. No, excuse me. Yeah, four that are in the plane of the paper and three that are not in the plane. So maybe a little bit trickier than uh, than um, than on average, but hey, that's okay, right? Once we have assigned the one, two, three, and four, all these things are worked in the same manner. So I'm gonna quickly go through and assign R and S, okay? But if you need to pause and you need to go through and you need to check my work uh, or how I did it or whatever it is, you know, come see me in office hours and we can get that hashed out, okay? This one's R, this one's S. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So this one should be S. Uh, this one should be R then. Let's see. Uh, this should be S and this should be S. Okay. Great. 
We've assigned R and S, now we just go through and answer. What's the relationship of A and B? Well, A is S, B is R, in antiomers. Okay. But wait a minute, Dr. H, these aren't mirror images the way they're drawn. Right, it's just the way they're drawn. At the moment, they're not drawn as mirror images, but if you have one chiral center and one is S and the others R, they have to be in the antiomers. Okay. So B and F, R and S, and then T omers. Okay. E and F, R and S again, and then T omers. Cool. D and A. Right, A is S, D is S, same. And you can go through and look at F and G, same and same. So what's the tricky part about these questions? Identify your chiral center, assign it R versus S, and then compare it to the other ones that are in there. Remember, you can only have a, or you can really only start to see diastereomers if you have more than one chiral center. Okay. All right. Um, well, I've only got about five minutes left on this recording, so I don't really have time to swing into number three. So we'll just pause here at the end of number two, go through, assign your R versus S, and uh, that is how you solve this problem.